The debate over the best Final Fantasy wages on and will likely never come to a satisfying agreement with every fan. That said, Final Fantasy IV has remained one of the favorites and it's plain to see why as it's one of the most ported and remade games in the franchise. So to celebrate the game's 25th anniversary, I decided to look at these remakes to see how it's fared over the years on this edition of Portaholics. It all began with Final Fantasy IV, which launched on July 19th, 1991 for the Super Famicom. It released just a few months later in the US on November 23rd, 1991 for the Super Nintendo as Final Fantasy II for a couple of reasons. One, the first game debuted in 1990, instead of re-releasing the older titles and because the new game was, well, the newest at the time, they decided to launch it under Final Fantasy II instead of IV, thus confusing Americans for a good while. But that aside, the leap from 1 to 2 for Americans was astounding at the time, and not only graphically. Characters came in and out of parties, the story was epic and involving the first importance on crystals, but also offering tales of love, loss, and revenge, a more robust battle system, and so forth. I could go on about the intricacies on why Final Fantasy IV is a staple in the series, but this video is mainly focused on its many ports, so let's move on to the second notable release. On March 29th, 1997, Final Fantasy IV was ported to the original PlayStation in Japan. For the game's 10th anniversary, it was then re-released in the US in 2001, bundled also with Chrono Trigger, and for the first time in Europe in 2002, which also came with Final Fantasy V. Ultimately, this version looks and plays very similarly to the original, although tweaks were given to the difficulty and it included CG cutscenes. For the other regions, changes were also made to the scripts to essentially make it truer to the original. This was the first time I got to play the game myself, and even though I was big on the series to that point, I was more excited for Chrono Trigger's port. While each were cool to play in the PlayStation, the loads on both were pretty bad, making it very annoying to go into even menus. And yet I beat both of them, because I was really just that dedicated, I guess. Or more like hungry to actually play these games for the first time. Anyway, the next port came only to Japan on the Wonderswan Color on March 29, 2002. The big difference with this version is the graphical improvements to both color and the actual sprites, detailing areas and characters better. Because of this, I would categorize the Wonderswan Color Edition as the game's first remake. As interesting as it is, there is a better version that was built off of this, which you're seeing right now, and it came to other countries. The reason why it never released before this next one is simply because the Wonderswan and Wonderswan Color were both exclusive handhelds in Japan developed by Bandai in coordination with Nintendo's former Game Boy creator, Gunpei Yokoi. There's an interesting story to further dive into here, but let's save that for another time. Now to stop beating around the bush, Final Fantasy IV Advance launched first in the US on December 12, 2005 for the Game Boy Advance. It was a better version of the One Swan Colors, boasting tweaked graphics, music, and improved text even beyond the PlayStation iteration. There were also new quest areas and gear added as a bonus. As a side note, this version in the Game Boy Advance ports of Final Fantasy V and VI are probably the best versions of the game. That is, unless we're talking about the next version for Final Fantasy IV, which was a huge leap forward. On July 22nd, 2008, a remake for the DS launched in the US. It's a complete overhaul unlike anything before it, including 3D visuals, improved music and text, along with in-game cutscenes and voice work. Like the Game Boy Advance version, it also had extras as well, including gear, monsters, minigames, and some gameplay tweaks as well. It's reminiscent of Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation with short, stocky character sprites and low polygonal graphics. I dabbled with the Game Boy Advance version via a friend at the time, but this was the second time I actually bought Final Fantasy IV, and it served as a good exercise buddy while going to the gym in college. Now, it's important to note that this wasn't the first 2D Final Fantasy game to go 3D. Final Fantasy III predated this one when it launched in 2006 in the US and 2007 for both Europe and Australia, and this version was the first time these three territories experienced it. In fact, the DS remake is only the second time Square Enix has put it out originally since it released in 1990 in Japan for the Famicom. Anyway, at the time I was excited to see all of the original six games go full 3D, 
one more specifically than anything else, 6 of course, but sadly 3 and 4 were the only two to get the DS remake treatment. Strangely enough, the next iteration is also a remake, technically from the original, but a lower tiered version from the DS version. Final Fantasy IV The Complete Collection released on April 19th, 2011 in the US for the PSP. Instead of porting the DS edition to the PSP, Square Enix decided to go back to 2D style with graphics that are hard to explain, so I'm glad you're actually watching a video. It's kind of tacky, watercolored sprites as if they were made in a basement somewhere. It's the ugliest version of the game, I think, though I kind of understand why, as this edition includes Final Fantasy IV The After Years, which is a short epilogue to the end of the game's original story, along with a new story called Final Fantasy IV Interlude. As The After Years originally came out for the FOMA, a phone-type service in Japan, it looked like a Game Boy Advance game, more or less, so the company would either have to remake that into 3D, or just make a new version of 2D4 to better resemble the epilogue. It's a bizarre conundrum, to be sure. By this point, I've glossed over a couple ports of the game, having no real experience with them, really, and because they don't offer much in terms of differences. Plus, it's kind of hard to find some information on some of these. There were ports in Japan for the iMode in 2009, EasyWeb in 2009 as well, and Yahoo in 2010. Plus, since the PSP version, ports came worldwide to the iOS 2012, Android in 2013, and PCs in 2014. As of now, I haven't seen Square Enix talk about porting the game anytime soon, but I dare say 12 systems in 25 years may be quite enough to satiate fans. Let's get in on a 3DS remake of 5 or 6 already, okay Square Enix? Now, with that petty gripe aside, I want to wish Final Fantasy IV a very just 25th anniversary. And uh, I would really say track down that DS version or the Game Boy Advance version if you really want to have a nice little treat. Of course, the iOS port is the DS version, but I just don't like playing huge RPGs on my phone. I guess it would be okay on the iPad, but <laughs> either way, celebrate with the rest of the world and show some love to Final Fantasy IV. Did you know that was a Reaction Examiner video? If you liked it, you should subscribe to me to keep up with everything that I'm doing. Also, if you have some other interests, like sex for example, check out Tomops, which is a comedy sex podcast thing wherein my best friend and I check out the weird and abnormal in the erotic. And of course you should support me on Patreon because hey, I want to make the channel better and I want your help to do so. Plus, if you want to check out my writing, check out Game Jerk where I have archives and new stuff for all projects, okay? You can find all the stuff and more in the description with the links below. Thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.